Welcome back to another edition of SVG's Sports Tech On Demand. I'm Dan Daly, SVG's audio editor. And today I've got the pleasure of speaking with Martin Deister, Vice President Business Development at Telos Alliance. Hi, Martin. How are you? Hi, Dan. Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, yeah, very well. Thanks. Uh, yeah, that's all, all right. good. All good, good considering. <laughs> yeah, right. You have to add that as an addendum to every response to that question. Yeah. As yeah. good as possible under the circumstances. Quite. Absolutely. Well, good, good. Hopefully the next time we see each other, we'll be at a trade show. In the meantime, let's take a walk into the cloud today. Yes, we're going to be mm-hmm. talking about the uh, the Telos VIP as in virtual intercom platform today. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Tell us about it. So, well, we launched Telos Infinity as a hardware intercom platform back in uh, 2018 at NAB. And, and what was very different about, about Infinity was it's an fully featured broadcast intercom system with no central matrix. So that's three years ago we've launched that and it doesn't seem like yesterday. And uh, as I say, the big thing about that was an intercom system based around hardware with no central matrix. Um, And by having that capability adapted uh, well to remote broadcasting and it's, it's, it's sold pretty well. Um, But as we moved into, uh, into 2020 and we all got, sort of caught out by the by the pandemic of course um we we got a lot of uh, feedback from customers we're interested in using your hardware solution in a way that it's intended you know for these kind of remote broadcast models it, it has that capability built in but we'd really like to uh, uh, be using something cloud based something something soft based and uh, as a company telos had always always had this in mind it hadn't been sort of front and foremost in our thinking in terms of the roadmap and the pandemic really accelerated that and and part of the beauty of being uh, of, of having a product based around a, a decentralized model is and this sounds rather more simple than than the r d guys would have, have me say it. it it's kind of like taking the software out of the hardware devices as i say all individual devices on a network with no central core taking the software out of the middle of those devices finding a way to um to create a virtual a virtual platform out of them um and in doing so we discovered the the technology of containerization called docker so we took the we took the software from from the hardware product, say in very simple terms again, um, created a Dockerized version um, of, of of the product that could then be managed in a cloud server, um, and uh, turned it into the product that we launched called VIP. So in in simple terms, it is taking the individual hardware devices. Um, if you need a sixteen panel system, deploying sixteen Docker containers on a server platform, creating a, a, a VLAN on the server platform um, and, and running in them in very much the same way as we do the hardware product. So uh, that distributed model of communication is, is maintained, but those panels of course have to be accessed by users, otherwise they're absolutely useless. Um, so each panel has a web server um, uh, the system as a whole has a web server and it, and it and and by simply sending somebody an invitation to connect to a panel uh, it opens up a, a, a browser connection direct into that virtual panel it uses webrtc audio or webrtc connection technology opus support um, to give you a, 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 a direct access to a to a virtual panel so what you have in front of you is a software version of an infinity panel Running in the cloud, using your own browser, using your own audio tools on your on your computer or your phone, um, or you know your laptop or your tablet, um, to communicate with the other devices that are on the server. Um, that that of course in its own right is a is a closed environment, and, and and that's not going to work for everybody. Of course, intercom is a is a subsystem within broadcast, a hugely important one, but it relies on connectivity to the rest of the audio production system. So of course you need connectivity from a mixing console or an audio router. You need mix minuses, uh, talent pre hear mics. Um, you need connectivity to camera positions and, and, and stuff like that. So what we also did in virtualizing the uh, panel uh, technology is virtualized Infinity Link, 
uh, which is a, a codec technology which converts in its hardware form converts audio over IP or AS67 um, to Opus and then can be uh, used for VoIP connectivity over WAN. But we virtualized that in the same way. We containerized it so it can be installed on the VIP server. And that gives you connectivity outside of the realm of, of, of the panel space. Um, and that can be used for connectivity within the cloud. So to other cloud services, cloud-based audio mixers, cloud routers, cloud production systems from various companies that are in that space, but also uh, wide area network connectivity um, to on-prem systems. So, you know, let's say for argument's sake, somebody's using another intercom brand, they're using a, a console from our friends at Calrec, Lavo, Studer, Stage Tech, you know, SSL, um, and uh, they need to get mixed minuses from a hardware device into the cloud. That's where Infinity Link comes in. So, we, you know, we have a fully featured um, uh, fully integrated um, and, and now a, a proven um, technology solution that, that pulls together uh, the on-premise world, the cloud environment and, and products from all other brands, including our own, um, uh, working in a, you know, a truly scalable and um, um, agile space. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned that the uh, pandemic accelerated a lot of the things that you've been talking about here in terms of product development and whatnot. Yeah, it's, it's certainly accelerated remote production and mm -hmm. it certainly has accelerated virtualization of systems. And it seems to have moved things even further into the cloud. Um, did this, did the speed, the rapidity of this transition, is it, is it manageable for the industry? Did it did it move a little faster, perhaps, than a lot of people expected it to? Because yeah, I I, th I think so. Um, you know what I see talking to customers um, and with VIP, it's been the 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 buzz around it's been huge. So I'm mean, talking to a lot of customers. Um, everybody's sort of clamoring for a very similar kind of solution. You know, uh, it, it's it's caused vendors to make a double take. We're in a lucky position. We we don't rely on a central chunk in the middle um, uh, to be able to 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 do what uh, you know, some of the competing brands brands do. So we didn't have to virtualize an entire matrix to do that. Um, but the speed of it has been incredibly quick. And I think one of the things that we've learned is that people are using whatever tools they can find to to make do, uh, compromising perhaps the production standards I, I don't really want to say it quite like that but at least but at least using using products that they wouldn't normally have gone near um, to do uh, to do some of this stuff I mean there aren't an awful lot of cloud audio mixers out there there's not a lot of choice when it comes to intercom so you know there there's been a lot of use of zoom in in broadcast not just for contribution but for production comms uh, been use of, of tools that are previously only really used in in esports well not even esports productions but just people gaming you know gaming comms um consoles like uh, reaper uh, a, a daw console because it can be deployed in the cloud um, being used for TV production. So, you know, um, the, the, the space is, is vast to fill up with requirements for the global industry. And uh, um, it, it's moved at a pace that I don't think any of us could have anticipated. Are the standards there that you need, that the industry needs for this, for this transition? Um, what, what do you mean by standards? I mean, particularly. Well, the, the, well, the, the, the industry-wide standards. In other words, remember the transition mm -hmm. that we made from stereo to multi-channel, et cetera, and then we, knew we needed a new mm -hmm. set of standards for that, particularly for broadcast. Did the, the speed with which we've transitioned this, these types of systems into the cloud, into virtualization, were, the, were what you needed in place already? Was what you yeah. needed in place already pretty much? Yeah, I think so. I think I think what you can say about that is the transition to IP has helped a great deal. You know, a lot of the lessons learned learned with with with, with IP have uh, extended themselves into in, into the cloud because a lot of that can be reused. Um, I mean, particularly within the cloud, uh, AS sixty seven multicast won't trans. You know, you can't you can't 
really connect it between data centers. You can't even really connect it between virtual machines in the same data center. But um, at least if you're running on the same the same CPU, you can you can build an audio over IP infrastructure using AS67 as we've done with VIP, um, and it wouldn't have been we'd have had to invent something to do that if we if we didn't already have it. We've right. got um, Opus is an open standard that that we can use. It's a, a developed codec for cloud to on prem to to in cloud connectivity. Um, so there's a lot of stuff we didn't have to reinvent to make this work. Good, good. You answered the question better than I put it. So, <laughs> I Thank you. That. Just to yeah. wrap up, any uh, any uh, uh, sports event coming up that uh, Telos is going to be uh, integrated within? Um, well, I mean, one of the one of the sports uh, broadcasters that's been using Infinity for Remy production for a while now is IMG in the UK. Uh, they've been using the, using the hardware product. Um, we're doing a lot of proof of concept stuff. Um, some of that, I well, actually can't really mention any of it because it's under NDA um, specifically, but we are talking to a number of sports broadcasters about the possibility of using using VIP for, for productions. It's a you know, it's quite an extensive list, so I hope to be able to tell you more about that next time we speak. But um, a lot of these are proof of concepts, and again, customers figuring out what what the tools are that they can that they can pull together to make this stuff work. And we're very happy to be able to present them with a with a fully rounded intercom piece in the middle, um, while while they look for the other the other parts to join onto it to make uh, to make it reality. Gotcha. Well, thanks for taking the time today, Martin. We really appreciate it and hope to get to see you in person sometime very soon. Yeah, I hope so too, Dan. And uh, and uh, uh, yeah, stay safe and uh, thanks, for, thanks for your time. Cheers. Well, you, you too. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.